Oh, they used to give us one anyway. Oh, yeah, nice. Uh, nice. Uh, here we go. Welcome to Sports Econ 101. You know our show. It's where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. Yeah, you know how we do it. You know, that's right, Frederick. Week in and week out. That's I'm right. Edward Brown, your host, along with Vern Glenn. Where the Giants come to town. It's, it's bye, 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 baby. There you go. Beautiful. <laughs> now, some people are saying, what the heck are they saying? <laughs> you know, it's actually based on a Broadway play in the 1930s. Russ Hodges, the Giants announcer, he used that call as his home run call. Said he loved the, the play so much that he incorporated Bye Bye Baby into his home run call in the early 1950s. And that's where it came and from. So there you go. Well, let's introduce our people. So we've got Vern Glenn from CBS affiliate KPIX TV in San Francisco and well known radio sports personality Bruce McGowan. And today's gonna, show, show's going to be fun. We're going to cover uh, NFL running backs as our trivia theme. Oh. Okay, we'll see how much you guys know. Okay. You, audience, take this as a hint. They know. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, all right. We, 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 we sound like we do. We sound like yeah. we do. Yeah. And the, uh, let's see. Ben kind of an undervalued position in today's game, though, huh? Yeah. The running back? Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. Just ask Darren McFadden of the Raiders <laughs> last well, week. Oh, yeah, if he played with the Raiders. Yeah. Could not believe that play. Yeah. Unbelievable. I, 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 that, that, that's a story. You were there. You were there. I was there. Yeah. I was. There. I maybe, saw it all. Maybe we'll cover that. Okay, yeah. so when we're going to ask these trivia questions at the commercial breaks, the first three emails with the correct answer are going to win a free three-day, two-night stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Uh, you can email edward at sportsecon101.com the answer to those questions. Uh, today's show, let's see, what are we going to cover? We're going to cover um, the possible hometown uh, advantage for the Arizona Cardinals uh. if they get into the Super Bowl. Wow. It'll remind me of the... Yeah. Um, Time when the 49ers kind of had it. Yeah. They, and the Rams. The Rams kind of had it. Now, when Kurt Warner yeah. ran the offense in Arizona when it went to the Super Bowl, did they have home field advantage? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember that now. All yeah. I remember about that is that against if, if, is that if they would have if he would have knocked the Pittsburgh Steeler out of bounds. I don't remember who, who made that. It play. was Heinz Ward, wasn't Heinz it? Ward, yeah. no, um, no, 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 because it was. Uh, uh, it was an interception, run back for a touchdown. And oh, that's that the difference play. in the game. Okay. Okay, so uh, stay with us because Sports Econ 101 <laughs> is going to be coming right back after these messages. All right. <laughs> yeah, I can't, can't believe Arizona is 6 and 1 right now. That just astonishes me. I'm going, you know, it's like. Cowboys next week. Well, it's like the Probably Cow without Rose. Oh, is that right? Who they have? It's like I watched some of the Cowboys game last night. I go, what the hell is going on here? Washington with Colt McCoy beats the Cowboys. Yeah, that's and I can't believe the Warriors open their season tonight. The season opens tonight. So in Sacramento, everybody's talking about the 49ers and the Giants. Warriors are sort of creeping. But Jim Barnett told me he said that he thinks this is the greatest Warrior team he's ever seen. Really? He says they're going to win. He thinks they're going to win the Western Conference and go to the final. That's Damn! Awesome. <laughs> and when Jim Barnett said, said that, Jim said Damn. that. Yeah, and I go, can I can I use that for publication? He goes, you can. You can take it to the bank, Bruce. Unless they get injured, they're going to the, they're going to go to the finals this year. Well, okay, so Steph. I wonder how much of a crowd they're going to get there. <laughs> oh, they're in Sacramento. I know. So oh, no, it's Sacramento, packed up place. There'll be a lot of Warrior fans up there too. But I think the hardcore sports fans. God, did you see the Sunday night ratings for the World Series? They were abysmal. Got right? crushed three to one by like what, so what was it? Packers and what, what Packers? Who the Packers play? I don't remember. I didn't even watch it. Packer game just had just just outdrew them like yeah. like three to one. I mean, it just yeah, tells that's you. Sad. That's sad. Just just tells yeah. you. It just, hey, it just tells you the American. NFL is king. Yeah. yeah. NFL is king. Well, it's a single game. It's a big event. You know, World Series is like one event, but it's five, seven games, whatever. Yeah, but they watch it's, it's like you know, it's the playoffs, the World Series. I mean, this a lot is the people big. Like, a lot of people in America don't like baseball. Edward, though. Edward, if, yeah. if, if if baseball really meant anything, it was a draw. They'd never be on Fox Sports One. Yeah. They'd never be on TNT or TBS no. or anything like that. They, the, the, the reason why they're on those those channels is because Fox can get more viewers watching The Simpsons than watching baseball. Oh, and you, and you, may, you may laugh, but hey, but if you hey, if you had to write those checks and if you were running the company and you saw the numbers, you know it's you interesting. No, baseball the, 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 the has country. never made more money now, but it's making more money and yeah. brought more fans to the games and buying and people are buying more. But, but as far as TV but ratings, because and, it's not the Red Sox and. Well, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a it's a market. It's a large market, but it's not I, think, the I, I, I think if, I think if you had there. I think if you had Red Sox playing the Giants, it's it still would be pummeled, be crushed by any NFL game. Probably, yeah, it probably would. NFL. I don't understand that. I mean, I don't understand why the NFL is so popular. I think the NFL is. Yeah. I think it's overblown. It's, but but it's, it's it's just it's 
It's built for gambling. Yeah. Oh, that's true. You can't make any money gambling on baseball. No. Yeah. Just, and, 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 and there's too many games. I think a lot I mean, of people are going to It's 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 weekend, week out. One game with, with so much on, it's just just you can be more casual. so much to bet on. Yeah, you can be more casual with football. Well, you know what? Let's get into that. Let's you don't have to be casual. With the baseball, you you don't have to be casual, but it helps to be hardcore. I mean, you can get hardcore yeah. football too. But I'm just saying, I think it's easier to follow football as a casual fan. Yeah, okay. it's only once a week. Right. Here we go. Yeah, but it would have been great to as well. Yeah, we'll talk about. It. <laughs> <laughs> They all have their names on the back? I don't know about that. I got my own book. My in laws gave me this one. <coughs> I got my name on the back. Sweet. Okay. How much it cost for this stupid thing? 150 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, but you know, hey, more power to them. Take it here. Sports Econ 101 continues. I'm Edward Brown, your host, Vern Glenn, and Bruce McGowan, my famous co host. Uh, Vern, you're telling us uh, off break here about how abysmal. World Series ratings. Oh, the ratings event. numbers are. They get well. You knew when the Giants and Royals made it. I'm sure the execs at Fox had to go. Oh man, <laughs> we don't have a we, we don't have a real true major market team. Well, in this thing. San Francisco is a major market, but the problem is it's out in the middle. It's on the far well, left, left side right, of the yeah. coast. You know, it's not out in the, in the northeast. You know what, Bruce? It's not, it's, it's, it's not Los Angeles. No. And if it's not That's Los right. Angeles, then that is That's it. Right. I mean, I, we're the sixth largest the only market. Thing, but the only thing worse would have been Houston. Tampa Bay. Yeah. The only people who care about I'll this. Give, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a stat about the Bay Area market. Yeah, you can talk about how big it is. You know, and, and, and how much of a you know big TV market it is. San Fr the San Francisco Bay Area market has the lowest television viewership of any of the top ten markets in the country. Is yeah. that because we have uh, quote other things to do? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it does. Exactly it, it, right. Other things to do. It's it's more it's, intelligent. Uh, you know, people live out here, and we're, and we're in the arm, <laughs> like us, <laughs> and we're in the armpit of of of, of Silicon Valley. Yeah. yeah. And anybody right. who wants to know anything about just going on, get your just smartphone pick up your out. smartphone yeah. or whatever, and just and, and you can find it out that way. Yeah. Have you ever watched a game on a smartphone? It's one. It's one of the. It, I did. I did yeah. Sunday night because I had the I had the, the Raiders Browns. I was yeah. in Cleveland. So you're you're done just right about the time their game started, weren't you? Yeah, I mean, after about the fifth interview about well, why did you lose? You know, just, <laughs> you know, you know, you know. How, many time, how many times can you ask that question, by the way, Vernon? Because you you have to yeah. cover the Raiders. I'm telling I, you, man, I, it's, I, it's I a cover broken record. Nothing like you. It is a broken record. I mean, now you got an 0 and seven football oh. team with with <laughs> no hope. Look at look look at the next four opponents. You I got know. Seattle this Sunday. In Seattle. in Seattle. In Seattle. Oh, that's going to be a loss. They got the Denver Broncos. That's going to be a they loss. They got the San Diego Chargers. In San Diego, that's another loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. then they've got that. Okay. Two out of three are in their division, so that's yeah. not. Good. Absolutely. <laughs> so, I mean, it's. it's then Kansas City, right? And the Kansas there's City another, Chiefs. Another one in uh, their division. Are they going to win a game this year? I think they win one game. Well, I, I mean, they, you know, the, the old you know the old company line as well as the NFL any given Sunday and this that thing, but it's it, stop. Yeah, stop <laughs> it. They're bad. Stop They're, that. Did you think they were going to be this bad? No, no I, didn't think no, they were I don't really think bad. anybody bad. No. I don't no. think anybody did. I mean, but the thing is, I will say this: they're playing. They're, they're, they're playing better under Sperano. Oh yeah. I mean, no. I, I, they're I, in the I, games I at least. Get that, but they're in that game. And I mean, let's hey, let's just get right to it. It happened right in front of me. Yeah. Here's here's the Raiders. They started driving their own nine. They're going through the Cleveland defense like a hot knife through foot. They're at the 29-yard line. Right. Nothing's stopping them. McFadden, nine yards to the 20, he gets hit by Dante Whitner. And fumbles. Ball pops yeah. free right into Hayden's hands, and he runs it back 30 yards, sets up a touchdown. Game over. Good night, yeah. Irene. Yeah. That's the Raiders. That's the Raiders this year. Amazing. So we're, so we're talking to D-Mac in the locker room, and I mean, he, I mean, he sacked up. He manned up. He's like, yeah. hey, man, hey. Yeah, I take full responsibility. I, I got to protect the football. Oh, really? Yeah. So I, but get mad. No, no consolation. Yeah. Now, are, they, are they better than the Tampa Bay Bucks back in 1976 when they first started? They lost 26 in a row, yeah. and right now the Raiders are at 13. 13 in a row. Yeah. <laughs> and then the and the record for second worst long, losing streak is uh, the number's 19. Yeah. So they're not too far behind. So yeah. you figure on paper, you know, they get through these next four yeah. weeks. 
then that's what? That's uh, 17 straight losses? You know, seven. They have a couple of good players. They got a good young quarterback, Derek Carr. They got a, a very good veteran receiver in James Jones. They Absolutely. Got, they got Absolutely. A, Khalil Mack, a rookie uh, Ryan linebacker. Yep. Very great, good. Against, great against the run. Yeah, Charles Woodson, even though he's 38, is still a pretty good player. But they just don't have a whole lot else besides that. They have four or five good players. The rest of them are just untested journeymen and rookies and nobodies. One guy that nobody's heard of, but that, that, that really – that really shined, I thought, was Kimbrell Tompkins. The yeah. wide receiver he, the guy from the nice Patriots. Matches, yeah. he was great with the Patriots, and Belichick said, hey, man, you guys are getting a really good player. He's just got, he just got lost to the numbers. Yeah. So maybe he'll, the Patriots. he'll, maybe he'll, he'll uh, fill a role with the Raiders. He had an eye-popping one-handed catch. Hey, he was all that. over. I saw that. That was an amazing he, could, he was so close, he could tell He could tell what he had for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and Tompkins still reached out with his right hand and, and hauled it, it in on a one-handed great. pass in the third well, quarter. Going back, you asked for a second, change the subject. Yeah. Going back for just a minute, we, we talked about um, Sunday's uh, abysmal result. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 we were talking about, about the Packer game. Yeah, Packer game. The, 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 the Packer game Sunday outdrew the Red, the Giants game. Game for the World Series, like it was like 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 three to one, wasn't even close. You know, if you were at the Giants game as I was sitting in the lower bowl, though, like uh, twenty yards from the field, you didn't care who was what. It was such an electric atmosphere. Yeah. God, it was great to be out there in the stands with the fans, not with all of us cynics who have to be quiet. You know, you could actually become a fan. Vernon, I actually cheered. I did, and I gave a high five to a few people. It was fun. Yeah, but Bruce. Uh, I mean, just for fun. But Bruce, let me let me just throw this out. And, yeah. and please, be honest with okay, me. Okay, sure. Okay, you're Bruce McGowan. Right. You're a native New Yorker. Native, okay. native San Francisco. I'm, ju I'm just okay, saying, yeah. I'm just saying, in a polar universe, right. there's another Bruce McGowan. Okay. okay? Yeah. He's grown up in New York. New York okay? fan. He's a Yankee fan or a Mets fan. Or, or Jets okay? fan. Okay, all right. And, and it's, and it's let's say it's, uh, oh gosh, let's say it's 11 o'clock. At night. At night. Right. On the East Coast. I'm not watching the on Giants. A Sunday night. Are yeah. you watching no. it? Do you give a damn <laughs> well, about, I mean, about the Giants if, and the Royals? If I'm a baseball fan, I probably would like to watch it, but I'd be more. I'd just be kind of curious. I'd rather watch my team. Well, play. see, then, then that then that proves my point exactly yeah. because yeah. because multiply that New York Bruce McGowan by ten million. Let's just yeah. say that's just New York. Yeah. Well, let's just say there's another. The game started eight, though. The game started at five. Five so oh seven, five so seven Pacific. Eight. I know. So, so that's, that's eight o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking about eleven o'clock. I mean, that's at the very end. That's what I'm talking. Yeah. Well, you well, know what's uh, interesting but, though? But, and all all these stats though aside, it's interesting. Every single team is making more money than they've ever made before. Because because of the TV money. Well, not just the TV, but uh, they're drawing huge crowds. Uh, I mean, you go up to a team. baseball second and they say, "We're going to take your TV money away from you." And let's oh, just see sure, what they, no. let's see how much they yeah, spend. But here, but 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 wait, but my my point exactly. Okay, so let's let's just take ten million Bruce McGowan's in New York. <laughs> let's get let's take ten more in Boston. Yeah. Let's take ten more million in Philadelphia. Yeah. I'm but, going down. I'm going down with all these East Coast major markets. But you know, I don't not watching. Yeah, I don't it's care. Gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm like I like baseball. But, I don't but, care. But I don't Bruce, care. You were, but Bruce, if Who you were, if you were running Fox, if you oh, were yeah, major sure. major. Sure. Oh, you're damn right you, yeah, care. Sure you care. But I don't, so I don't have to. Well, see, well, <laughs> well, that, 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 you, just, said that, you said the teams are making money, a lot of money, on TV. Mm -hmm. but they're they're making a lot of money elsewhere, too. Okay. Look, they're, look they're, at the they're, Giants. They're on TV yeah. that you were talking about. Yeah, I mean, I'll, 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 call, I'll call out the ownership of the Chicago Cubs. They have no incentive to win. No, they they're don't. They're making so much yeah, money. They make so much money. Off, off of people going to the games and, and, and the TV money. They, you know, the the guys to guys to put money into improve their ball. Why would they? The guy sitting in front of me at the Giants game the other night, he bought the ticket online, twelve hundred dollars to sit ten rows from the field. Twelve hundred bucks, and I'm thinking, you know, that's a that's a week's check for some people. Yeah. You know, come on. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, one for three hundred dollars that were it was standing room. Uh, no, no, they looked like decent seats. Really? And by the time, I mean, I. I Emailed the guy and just never heard from him. Yeah, because he probably he probably sold it. <laughs> yeah, he sold it like yep. really, 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 really quickly. Yeah. I feel sorry for the fans that 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 got all gussied up and painted up and all that kind of stuff. They get to the turnstiles where they kind of scan your ticket. I'll counterfeit. Sorry. Oh. Please step aside. Yeah, yeah that happens. Oh, yeah. Too. No, there were there were tons of fans. They just yeah. they were just a puddle of tears. I paid five hundred. Well, it's your problem, buddy. Yeah. yeah. That, that's why I'm like, when I buyer went to beware. Yeah. Like Great America, and someone was selling some tickets cheap. I said, uh, but that, I was with the guy there. I said, mm -hmm. as soon as we both get in, then I'll give you your money. Right. Yeah. yeah. There you right. go. I, I just, I, how, how do you? Uh, yeah. Guarantee against. They look. They look the just the like the regular ticket. Yeah. And the usher told the lady, "There's a couple of women that just broke down." Uh, he said, "We we don't even have a section with this number on it." Oh, yeah. no. oh, I wonder. Well, if, I wonder if scalpers do that a lot because scalpers have to be 
in the business every week the same guys are out sure. there and if they screw around with people and the word gets back and their their business is going to their credibility out. gone yeah. but i bet you it's, it's the online stuff that's where it is you know but 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 get into your point at the top because you got to go to break uh we had to go to yeah we'll, conti we'll continue it's a tease america we're going to pick it up <laughs> on the other side okay so yeah. our uh, trivia theme is nfl running backs mm -hmm. right? all right who was the first running back in history to score 30 touchdowns in a season, whether from the air or the ground? Okay, rushing and receiving touchdowns, 30. 30. Okay, tell me if you need a hint. Okay. Uh, era? That would help. Uh, he played. Uh, okay, I'll, he played, I'll tell you what. He did it in the year 2006. Did it in oh, 2006. 2006. Okay, oh. that's, that's a pretty wow. good thing. Okay, the first three emails with the, that correct answer are going to win a free three day, two nights stay at the Lighthouse Resort. Email edward at sportsecon101.com. The answer to this question, who was the first running back in history to score 30 touchdowns in a season, whether from the air or the ground? All right? And stay with us because Sports Econ 101 will continue. And we teased you once. We're going to tease you again when we get back. But we didn't go anywhere. Yeah. I, I have no clue. And it's funny because it's six. If, if you said, running back rushing and receiving. Yeah, if you said 1960 or 1976, I'd say I know that one, but not 2006. They did it in 2006. Who was a great one running guy? Back? Who was a great running back eight years ago? One guy eight years ago. Who won the Super Bowl? He was Indianapolis won the Super Bowl, but who was their running top running back? Peyton Manning was a quarterback. Who was their running back? Would be would have been a him. Who did they beat? They beat the Bears. The Bears have a running back that. Yeah, but the Bears do a lot better than the Chicago Cubs, don't they? But the Colts yeah. played the Saints in the Super Bowl. Was that the, the they TV did. and everything? Yeah. You know? I mean, people love the Cubs, but yeah. Uh, Who did, uh, they beat the Bears that year? It was Colts and Bears? I remember it was Lovey Smith. Lovey Smith, his big moment. Oh, that was the big thing. That was the two two black yeah. NFL yeah. head coaches. Yeah, that's right. In the rain, each other. In the rain, rain too. Yeah. Well, it rained real heavily. That was the only the whole, it's the only championship that Peyton won. Peyton Smith was the championship. Yeah. Four times or three times, and he lost twice. Twice, twice with three times, was twice with Indianapolis, and once with the Broncos. His brother's yeah. been his brother's been twice and won twice. <laughs> his brother's not half the quarterback he is. No, true. Yeah, that's one of the great. Tyree, David Tyree, who's now not a football. I know that that's, that catch. Uh, you were at that game, weren't you, Vern? Uh, yeah, where Tyree caught the ball against his helmet against Boston or against the Patriots. And it set up the winning, winning yeah. touchdown. Were you at that game? That was the only game they lost. Uh, Patriots Actually, lost. yeah, they were going to have a perfect they season. Perfect yeah, season. They lost. Yeah. yeah. I haven't been to the Super Bowl since 2000. That's the last one I went to. I went to 20. <laughs> My last one was 02. Was it 02? No. What are you talking about? The last one was the 49er one, the Saints. Oh, yeah, that was a great I mean, in uh, New Orleans. Uh, against the uh, Ravens. That yeah. was 2012. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who the hell? Who the uh, hell? Boy. Okay, here we go. Sports Econ 101 is still here and alive and kicking. And alive and kicking, and the guys are having a hard time trying to figure uh, out this question. Uh, yeah. Just to remind everybody, I'm Edward Brown, your host, Vern Glenn, and NFL Bruce McGowan. running back, rushing and receiving at least 30 touchdowns, touchdowns in, 2000. in 2006. 2006 year. He, said the, uh, he was the first running back in history to score 30 touchdowns in a season, whether from the air or the ground. And I know you've heard of this gentleman. I, I haven't. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Okay. Give it to me, Edward. Okay. Unless you want to, unless yeah. you want to just no, throw no, out, no, throw no, out no. hints so we can get there. I said it was in 2006. That didn't help you. Okay. Who did he play for? Okay. okay. That's what I'm going to tell you. And then, and then, okay. two, you get less than yeah. a half a second. Half a second. Okay. Ready? Uh -huh. Chargers. Tomlinson. Yes. Daniel well, Tomlinson. I would not have guessed LT. I. Yeah. Wow. That was his. Must have been his year of fame. Yeah. So. Talk about Super Bowl for just a minute here. Uh, if the Arizona Cardinals get in, isn't it being played in? Uh, but here's the deal: it is. They have to give a certain number of tickets up to the to the NFL. I think they get a certain. I don't think they get any more than the normal allotment that any team gets. I think it's like ten thousand. So they get ten thousand. But of course, a lot of people from Arizona would probably, yeah, they'll you know. Scalp them, get, scalp them, get those tickets. Yeah, well, the 49ers, I remember because I covered this game, the 49ers played Miami yep. in Palo Alto just down the road, and it was heavily, uh, you know, leaning towards the Niners. And also when the Rams played the Pittsburgh Steelers, I covered that game at the, at the Rose Bowl when the Rams were still in L.A. Mm -hmm. and the they place, shelled them. Yeah, they, well, it was close. Actually, it was close until the last quarter. But they also had a huge uh, majority of fans. You know, Vince one. Paragama, was it? Vince Paragama, very good. Former Cal star, former Nebraska star. Played at both schools. 
Didn't remember the Nebraska one. But yeah, no, no. He went, he went from Cal to Nebraska. That really upset a lot of people out here. Mm. Did not like that move. And ever since then, whenever he'd come to San Francisco to play the 49ers, they booed vociferously. Uh, quick little point here, because I was going to mention this part here. Uh, game one of the World Series, low TV ratings, 15% right. lower than last year's Red Sox Cardinals. And it was the lowest, lowest ever. Well, that doesn't surprise me. First televised. Because, like, I mean, Kansas City is, who knows about anything about Kansas City? And the Giants, as much as we love them out here, they're not real popular. They're not a national team. They're not like the Cubs. They're not even like the Braves. Yeah, but even Kansas City, not being there since 85, kind yeah. of have a Cinderella story. But it's, it is. Uh, uh, but uh, it's Kansas Edward, City. Edward, I'm telling you, 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 you go yeah. up to anybody and say, hey, Name two Royals. Yeah. Couldn't do it. I couldn't they do it. In Minnesota, I could I could name Eric Cosmer and Mike Moustakas and maybe maybe one of their pitchers. That's it. And no, when, when no, this, nobody cares. Yeah, when the season no, when, the post -season, when the postseason started. We're all supposed to be baseball fans. It's but, America's base the America's It team. is, but I mean I I, time. I don't know about you guys, but when this when the postseason started, like, who's this Lorenzo Kane? Who's this guy uh, yeah, right. you know, yeah, Alcides Escobar? In the, guy, in, 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 in the eyes of Vegas and the real money, that's the NFL. No, the NFL is, is America's yeah. best time. And I think that's why a lot of people follow the NFL, too. I hate to say it. I mean, I'm sounding cynical here. There are a lot of football fans out there. But there are a lot of people. It's easy to bet on football. Well, yeah. even even this fantasy football stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it feels, fantasy baseball, don't they? They do. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah they do. It's, not, it's not quite as big, though. And yeah. they have fantasy basketball and fantasy hockey, too. And they even have fantasy NASCAR. Seriously. They have fantasy NASCAR out there. They do. That's true. No, you know. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. Soon yeah. it'll be fantasy piddly links. Okay. <laughs> uh, moving on here, a little basketball. Steve Nash going to miss his entire year. Yeah, he's mm. done. Nerve damage. He's done. He's yeah, 41, say, 41 years old. Do you think Bernie, don't you think he's and done? I think, well, I think, there's, I think there's a $6 million insurance policy that's on the line. And if he, if he can't cash in on that, then he's going to try and come back next year. Oh, interesting. But if he can, but if he can cash in on that $6 mil, look for a retirement pretty soon. How many times he win the MVP? Three times? Yeah. Can't believe that guy's 41 already. Jeez. But hey, you I saw him playing college just it seems like yesterday, yeah. and now he's 41. Now I'm telling you, man, if your back is barking, even if you're like lifting luggage, oh, yeah. you, yeah, it's, uh, it's not a good thing for basketball. Yeah. 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 Particularly, particularly if you're playing the point. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. He was great when he was in his prime. Boy, he was fun to watch. For a first ballot Hall of Famer. Oh, no question. No question. I can yeah. remember we, you know, we had him on the Sunday night show, and uh, this is when he was still playing at Santa Clara. And, uh, and usually when we have a guest coming up on a, on, on a Sunday show, we send him to, to a dinner. And this though, in those days, it was the House of Prime Rib. Nice. Oh, yeah. Right oh, up yeah. the street from the TV station I was working for at the time. And uh, he just he, he came out, and the little town car wasn't there yet, and, and he didn't want to be late. So, so he ran. He ran? He ran to Carol and just so he would make it in time. Oh, that, what a guy. Good guy. Well, House yeah. of Prime Rib wasn't too far from Carol and wasn't just yeah, he ran like, yeah, he ran like yeah. six, seven blocks. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was pretty big. Vernon Vern actually so invited me on that show one time years ago. I don't know if you remember this, Vernon. And I still to this day can't figure out why would Vern ask a journeyman t radio broadcaster <laughs> on a show? I was filling in. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I think you were, yeah, I think Gary, it was Gary Radish. Gary, Gary show. must have been off, and yeah. I was, yeah, I was You needed a little help. So I, I ably sort of, well, tried to lend my expertise, whatever <laughs> I had. <laughs> but I got, I got a free meal out of the House of Prime Rib. That's right. Oh, that yeah. works. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Let's see here. Moving on here. Uh, back to the Royal Giants for just a minute here. Uh, apparently, the Royals think that the Giants have soaked it. They dirt. did. They to, did. But they, but to slow the... Uh, they did. Stage. Yeah, but did they do it for that reason? Yes. They, Manny Schwab did it in 1962 against the Dodgers in the playoffs, and it helped to slow the Dodgers down. The Giants won the, uh, won the uh, playoffs against the Dodgers. And I guarantee you, the point is the Giants. Any advantage you can gain is yeah. slow down, man. Yeah, you've got a home field uh, take it. groundskeeper who can do it. And the thing was, in 1962, it was really blatant. It was so bad that they had to call, the umpires had to call the grounds crew on the field, and the grounds crew had to fix it up, and they made it even worse. And the, the giant, the Dodger players were starting to make these noises, quack, 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 and they, but it was, you know, more fitting for ducks than it was for ball players. <laughs> so, you know. I thought that there was a, a legitimate reason uh, that they had mentioned. I can't remember what it is now. For well, of course, for you, so you'll buy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, Linscom, though, he kind of didn't hear his back uh, probably because yeah. of that. No, well, yeah. That's probably, but I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know why he tightened up, but he did. Yeah. But, but he retired five guys at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so, well, fair enough on that. But I, I, but again, I mean, these ratings, let's see, let's see what, 
Let's uh, now that everything's on the line. Let's just see what the ratings will look like when they finally come out. But I'm telling you, it's just okay. when they played the Tigers, the Tigers are a much bigger. I, 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 I got they so many. Ratings then? I got so many complaints about why, why? Why are they putting this this game on TBS and TNT yeah. and Fox Sports One? I said because they can get bigger numbers with, with the, the Simpsons, Simpsons on yeah, that's true. than that's the Major League Baseball. Yeah, it's true. Unless Homer is up the bat, I don't care. Yeah, there right. are enough Yahoo's out there who want to see the Simpsons, you know? Hey, Bruce. Like hey, Bruce. Yeah, we're a big finance guy, right? Yeah. Let's, let's, let's give him the Fox budget. And let's just see him look at the numbers. Yeah. And let's just and let's just let's go just, Simpsons. Let's just, let's, go, Sim let's, go let's, Simpsons. Let's, let's just see how much he loves baseball. Yeah, man. yeah. That's right. yeah. All the money, baby. All the money. Yeah, that's right. It's all about but the as a fan, that's different. That, yeah. you know, you're 100 percent right. Yeah. Definitely got to follow the money on that. I mean, I said the problem is it underscores what we've been saying all. Along. There are a lot of baseball fans in this country. There are probably a lot more of them today than there were 30 years ago. But you got years hundreds years. of millions of people yeah. out there. You got a lot more people in the world too. Yep. So that's sure. what's kind of skewing that whole thing. Very. But they're making a ton of money. Baseball's in great shape. Okay, this is a little bit of a touchy subject. So, what's the deal with Russell Wilson and the discord with the other Seahawks team? Alleged, uh, alleged, alleged, alleged. Story. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's Percy and, Harvin, and, right? And, and, and he was no, there. and on the focal up one, it, it, it's Marshawn Lynch. Oh, really? Yeah. Marshawn Lynch is the one. That he's said, the one that's saying that he's, Russell Wilson wasn't, wasn't, wasn't black enough. Wasn't black enough. Now, 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 now we were, Russell Wilson's supposed now, to say now, that. Now, now, we, now, but now we weren't. Now we weren't there. We don't know if he was saying yeah. it. And just we don't know if he was effing around. Yeah, we don't know if he was dead sick. I mean, I, well, you and I know a little bit about Marshawn. Yeah, he's basically, a, he's he's going to joke around about stuff. Yeah, you know? he, yeah, he, yeah. He's just playing around. He's you know? had a fun time. I'm and all and about that saying, action, boss. Yeah. 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 Did, did they only say that to players who like have uh, oh, one parent? Oh, mixed. Oh, you're like yeah. like a Derek Jeter, for instance, yeah, Derek or an Jeter, Alex yeah. Rodriguez. Yeah, but they never yeah. you never hear he's not white enough. No. You ever hear that? No. Well, it's white America. Yeah, right? I mean, come on. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I look at it. I, I, I was kind of blind. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're black. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Here I am, America. <laughs> Everybody right. in this country is a mud. You know, we're all muds. Yeah. We are. That's, that's true. Yeah. 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 We're, all, we're all from somewhere else. You Russian know? and... Nigerian. Yeah. But, but there, there, there's, there, there are alleged internal things coming out of that Seahawks yeah. library. But isn't, it, isn't it funny? How many Super Bowl champions have haven't even made the playoffs the next year? Yeah, yeah. That's, they, that is amazing. Well, they have some kind of pro something that something where they're just happens. not as as the impenetrable force as they were before. Well, that happened in baseball. The Giants, two years at running, they went the win the World Series next year. They don't make the playoffs. So next year it looks like they won't make the playoffs. Well, they're an even team. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, every even year they do well. Well, what about Percy Harvin? Do you think he'll he's going to fit in with the New York uh, Jets? Well, it's been, a, well it's been a while ago. It's been a couple of games. And I I haven't seen the Jets uh, walking tall yet. <laughs> no, but I trust Michael Vick. He says he won't be a monster. Michael Vick. You got to trust Michael he's Vick. Kind of the a new, the guy. New, now the new starting quarterback of the New York Jets. Well, he's better than Geno Smith. That's all I can yeah. say. Geno Smith's been a huge disappointment, and he's got a horrible attitude. Boy, Terrible yeah, wasn't it a lot of fun when uh, Vic played for Atlanta? I love Kenny. I love watching Michael Vick you know, play. Maybe, yeah, yeah, but that, that, that was that, that was the late twenties, yeah. Michael Vick. Yeah, it's a different Michael Vick. Yeah. He's about thirty three. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's had a lot of wear and tear on him. Yeah. You know George Blanda. George Blanda. Well yeah, pe people forget George Blanda didn't play very very often at quarterback after the age of thirty five. But when he did, man, he was something. He's still good. I remember going to a game and then late with four minutes to go, he comes into the game and the fans are like saying, Oh shit, oh pardon me. <laughs> Oh darn! Oh, darn. <laughs> Here comes George Blanda, and sure enough, six plays later, they're in the end zone, game over. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, and the fans are like, "Oh man!" And Al Davis loved it. He, 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 he also right. could have drop kick for. Uh, Al Davis was born the same year as George Blanda. They had a lot in uh, common. Seriously. So that'd be kind of interesting. Have yeah. him throw a touchdown, and then have him kick the extra point. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he, that's what he did. <laughs> And then kick a field goal on top of it. That sounds like Krusty and, and I, Tom from the... From the <laughs> <laughs> okay, think about it. We're going to cut through another commercial. Greatest, right greatest team of the 60s and yes, 70s. That's the right. Forget about the 90s. <laughs> let's, think, let's look ahead to the 2000s. Uh, well, then forget about the 2000s. Yeah. Well, he didn't that's, know that when he was saying this in the 90s, though, you know. Okay, so here's our uh, the second commercial. The Raiders. Is it its future? The Raiders, the Raiders will win. Okay, here's the commercial <laughs> break uh, question. Uh, again, talk to running backs. Who was the first running back to carry the ball over 400 times in the season? Oh, okay. Good question. And first first work. Work. Yes. This is 1984. 84. Okay. All right? Stay with us. Sports Econ 101 will continue. 1984. Roger Craig? Well, 
not saying. I'm not saying. No, Roger Craig was later. He had uh, Roger Craig actually caught a lot of passes. I remember he was. He's still the. Yeah. I think. I think the still still the first thousand receiving, yeah. thousand rushing. That's why people talk about it as rightly as they should. Montana and Rice and a lot of the are the three giants, you know, on the Mount Rushmore and, and Bill Walsh. But right up there with them, Roger Craig and Steve Young yeah, and, George, that and George Seifert. Well, you know, that, you know who, the guy, the guy hit him with his helmet for crying out loud, knocked it yeah. out with his helmet. That's not something you can. I know, it's, you know, it's funny. They didn't used to do that either. They didn't used to try to knock the ball out of your hands. Now they do. I never figured out why they didn't before. I know. I always looked at it. Go, go for the ball. Yeah. They never yeah, did it until recently. Yeah. It's a tougher game. Well, yeah. they, 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 have, they have drills in practice to replicate yeah. that. Yeah. No, they it do. still happens. No, you, know, you know what the theory was? Is that if you went for the ball, and if you didn't get it, then you couldn't tackle it easily. Yeah. Anything. You ever see the, the famous video with George? It's a uh, film, actually. George Howe's talking to Gail Sayers. He goes, hey, Gail, come over here. And Gail Sayers is working. He goes, here, here's what we want to do. We're going to put our hands on the ball. We're going to put it up next to our chest. He goes like this. He goes, yeah, like that. That's it. Because George was a running back. He goes, there you got it. You see it do that, you're never going to fumble. And then, of course, he never did fumble. Yeah. So, but, can, but that's the problem. Like, you do that. Yeah. And you can't run like Tom Brown like that. Yeah. Bill Ring. You know, they, they go like, oh, yeah. you wouldn't fumble. No. But you can't run like this. Well, you, the whole idea is once you break through the line, then you put it under your arm. But, you know, daylight and then yeah. take it away. Yeah. Like, run. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love the way Roger Craig ran over those high steps. That was so yep. classic. That yeah. was, was I mean, how many guys trip over guys that yeah. are not doing that? And, and the defensive the lineman had to be careful because he bring those knees up and hit you in the face with the knees. You know that. Uh, yeah, he whacked him <coughs> in the face. Okay, here we go. All right. Work Econ 101 is back. Edward Brown, Vern Glenn, and Bruce McGowan. Mm -hmm. Yes, Coros and all of us people here. Okay, second commercial break trivia question again. The theme is NFL running backs. Who was the first running back to carry the ball over 400 times in a season? And the hint was it was 1984. Wow. I don't, Eric, I don't remember this. Guy. I'm going to guess. You don't remember? I don't remember him. Uh, and I'll also give me another hint. Eric Dickerson? No. No. Uh, him I remember. It was with the Tampa Bay Five. Oh, uh, yeah. Ricky Bell? Ricky no. Bell. No. That's no. too That's too, too no. far. That's too far back. Uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks? Yeah. That's what they first do. Uh, I'm, first I'm, back for I'm never going to get this one. James goes. Wilder. Oh, I mean, yeah, number 32. Yeah, yeah James Wilder. Yeah, for some reason, I don't remember him. Well, he, can't have, he kind of came and went. One of those guys got hurt, and his, his career was over. Look at, look at Icky Woods is one of those guys. You see Icky Woods in the commercials now? He weighs about 300 pounds. He's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. The, uh, the, the Icky Shuffle. Right. Icky Shuffle, Icky yeah. Shuffle. Yeah. 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 I wonder if those ladies in there know anything about the, you know, in the commercial. They're probably yeah. looking at going, I have no idea what this is about. I always feel sorry for the Cincinnati Bengals because they got to the Super Bowl twice. Both times they lose in the final minutes to the 49ers. Isn't that, isn't that funny mm -hmm. that they, they, the Dolphins get killed, uh, Denver gets killed, and... Um, Chargers kind of Chargers got, got killed, too. Killed, yeah. But the two toughest, toughest teams. ones. Yeah, were, toughest games. One, I think it was Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson, and then, of course, Gilmer Esiason. Yeah. That was a real tough one. That's where they had to march down the field and John Taylor John had Taylor. to catch wow. the touchdown. Montana yeah. to Taylor. Yeah. That's right. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Bill Belichick sends Dar Darrell Rebus home after showing up late to a 7.30 a.m. meeting to get his Go conference. home. Go yeah, home. You're not hey. wanted. That's the Patriots way. Yeah, you gotta. Hey, listen. If you don't, if you show up late to a meeting that Bill Belichick has asked you to show up at seven, you show up at seven thirty for that guy. I mean, that guy's one of the best coaches in the game. You don't mess around. Well, yeah, pro I probably, know. probably. I, I'm almost on the receiving end of one of the great Bill Belichick blowoffs. Oh, really? Of my entire career. Is that right? Um, it, and he and he did it in four words. Uh, he, he was playing in a. Uh, He's playing in the AT and T. <laughs> and he wasn't even playing the pro am. Yeah. And and he, he was walking off the putting green, and uh, and and I said, to, "Hey, Bill, you had a minute on the way to the tee," and he simply said, "No, I'm good." That's what he said. <laughs> Sounds like and, and, and his so lips hardly move. How does he get? How does he get anything out? He just, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just <laughs> like what do you say? I, I think he said. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Speaks often and carry a big stick. Amazing. Yeah, that's Bill Belichick. He is the. He and is then the if you and if you if, if you ask him like a same a different way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't even he shows no emotion either. I've never seen him get angry, smile, look sad, anything. What's all? Uh, what was that? Something gate? What did they call that? The, when they uh, was it spy spy gate? Oh, spy gate. Mm -hmm. Spy gate. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so uh, what do you guys think of this Microsoft engine that's pretty good at predicting NFL games? I don't know if you know I haven't heard about this. Okay, it's got a 65% success rate. Wow. It correctly predicted 15 of 16 World Cup knockout wow. stage games, which I'm not, I don't, I'd have to go back to it and yeah. figure out how easy that was. Mm. Um, but the thing is, there's so many intangibles. How can a computer decide? Boy, you, got me. Boy you got me. Well, human beings have a tough enough time, so yeah. let alone maybe and, computers. And 65, I mean, I, you know, I guess anything over 50 50. They probably go, you know what they probably do? They probably go with the odds, which, you know, or if you go conservative and you go with the odds, chances are you're going to win. A lot of people don't want to do that, though, because they're not going to make a big payoff. Yeah, I used to think that the, the first game of the season, take the underdog at home. Because, you know, you don't really know which teams are really yeah, good. Yeah, you really can't get Yeah, that's so true. I'm, I'm trying to remember what my, you know, I'd have to go back. <laughs> back in time and figure out how how well that theory did. But you could always take two NFL helmets and just throw them in a barricade and see what money goes for. <laughs> there you go. I like that. That's a good one. I like that. That'll okay. work. Uh, let's see. Coming on here to basketball. Clay Thompson is still in contract negotiations. Splash brother. Oh, he'll, they'll sign him. They'll give, they'll give him the yeah, money. Give him uh, the it money. says here, uh, okay, he wants $15 million, uh, versus okay. the $3 million. Okay. Uh, they only want to offer him $3 million? Supposedly. Uh, how long is that going to affect the coming year? I mean, I'm trying to think of, if I'm a basketball player, you, know, you don't want that weighing on your mind. Yeah. But at the I same really time, thought you know, it'd be done. I, I, I'm shocked. Yeah. I really thought it'd be done by yeah. now. But at the same time, I will say this about Clay Thompson. The little I know of him, and I, I knew his dad quite well because I covered his dad. He is the kind of guy I think that would, if anybody could get through without being distracted through that kind of a, a mess, he's the guy to do it. Like, as a young player, I'm saying, you know, he's just not. I don't. Vernon, you cover the Warriors over mm-hmm. I don't sense a huge ego there. I mean, he's a guy. He's got a healthy ego, but he's not the kind of guy you disrespected me by not giving me. I think. I, I, I think. I, I think. I think he's learned a lot from his dad. Yeah. I think he's getting a lot of information and great, great advice from his dad. Yeah. And 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 I think that's that's really helped a lot. It certainly it certainly has helped Curry as well. Sure. And, uh, yeah. And so I I, I think. I think he just just goes out and plays. Just yeah. just just go play, you know. And when and when the deal is done, we'll send you a text and just simply it that says just simply it's done. Okay, so yeah. that's leave it. it to the agents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michael Michael Thompson and his dad, by the way. Michael Thompson always used to wear that little uh, necklace. He was the only player I ever saw who wore a necklace, and there was a reason for that. He it was something to do it was either some kind of religion or some sort of background, but really interesting guy because he's from the islands originally. From I think from. Uh, Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, he's from the island. Yeah, I'll tell you a quick story about Michael Thompson. Uh, in his younger years, uh, when he was playing for Portland, mm-hmm. he was he was dating a young lady, and, and for whatever reason, it didn't work out. You know, they, they moved on. Anyway, he goes and he gets married. And uh, fast forward years later, uh, I'm, at, I'm at a Nordstrom, and, and I'm working with a personal shopper who just happened to mention, yeah, I used to date Michael Thompson. Uh, she looks just like Michael Thompson's current wife. Really? Really? They <laughs> could be sisters, huh? He went out and got another one. <laughs> he got another model. Huh? Same name? Jeez. No, not the same name, but I mean, they, but they look same. exactly alike. Different name, same model. I won't yeah. say her name, but if you're watching, you know I, I who you are. Michael Thompson's yeah. wife was a very attractive woman, yeah. too. So, you know, I think it's like a Seinfeld episode. Yeah. Best mom in the NBA, though. Oh, yeah. Gotta be Steph's mom. Yeah, gotta be Steph. Such Steph a good Curry's mom. Oh, yeah. Just a good Hands mom. down. He is just such a, he's a good, a good young man. And I think the Warriors, Jim Barnett, the Warriors announcer, told me unabashedly the other night at the World Series, he said, I said, I've been the Warriors to be this year, Jim. And he's been the Warrior broadcaster through all the bad years. And he said, this is the best team I've ever seen. And this may be better than the team that won the championship. And I said, wow. Wow. Uh, okay, so wait, let's go through it. Okay, so you got the 76 team. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you got Clay Thompson. Right. Steph Curry. Right. Iguodala. Iguodala. David Lee. David Lee. Iguodala may come off the bench. Right? Yeah. Harrison Barnes. <laughs> Andrew Bogut. Andrew Bogut, who's healthy. You know, and you, Ooh, you, know, like you, you, you're bringing in Sean Livingston. You're bringing in Andrew uh, Barbosa. So you know, yeah, these, look, look what you got with Cleveland now. With uh, yeah, but you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll LeBron see. keeps saying, "Hey guys, don't don't be expecting a whole lot out of us." I mean, he's like, yeah. he "Come on, that we're we're working." Pro- he keep yeah, he yeah. he's throwing a bit of caution. I, you know, he was at the he was at the Browns game. Oh, was he? And then and and they and they got a quick shot of him. On the jumbo truck. Oh, I bet the fans went wild. And the, and he was wearing a Browns hat. Yeah. And he just went like this. He just tipped the cat. And the crowd went like that. Time. And the crowd went bananas. Oh, <laughs> well, David Cleveland's been dying. For I think I think not only did he tip it, 
I think he pointed yeah. to the Browns. <laughs> the Browns. I think you're saying, like, crazy. What, Vernon, what was the last time Cleveland had a megastar of that caliber? Otto, Otto Graham. Well, no. Uh, Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Oh, Brown. yeah, of course. But that's the last championship they won. Yeah. That's, you know, they, and they, were, they, were, they, were, they were, again, they, yeah. that, that, that point was made over and over again. The last time the, the Cleveland franchise won anything, yeah. the 1964 yeah. Cleveland yeah. Browns. Yeah, with Frank, Frank Ryan was the quarterback and Jim Cooley. I think Frank Ryan later became some kind of a politician. I believe he did, yeah. Huh. In the Republican Party, he was. What about all those people who burned a LeBron James? Uh, oh, they got some new ones now. <laughs> take them out of the fireplace. Yeah, take them out of the fireplace. <laughs> They're worth even more now. Look, yeah. you know, we've yeah. been to hell so back with you, LeBron. Yeah. You know, you, you, you're redeemed. You're back in the fold. You strayed, and now you've come I, back. Uh, let me say this, and this is for any of the, any of the viewers and listeners in the, uh, in, in the city and county of, of Cleveland. I, Cleveland is a terrific town i mean it's a it's it's a big city but it's got but it's got that midwestern folksy yeah. kind of mentality it's just severely underrated it's lots like of it, great restaurants you ever Every, think about the factories and no no yeah. not no not at all i mean no they got, yeah. got got upscale restaurants and hotels i mean the, and the, the people could not have been nicer i mean it, it yeah. just just i was just how was the stadium oh the stadium the stadium's beautiful yeah it's old it's like well, 14 15 years old the only, the only time but, I ever. In fact, I went down, got, got a little selfie in, in section 117 where the dog pound. The dog pound. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I got a little selfie there. Yeah. And, uh, How was the food? The food, food terrific. I had uh, they, they, they had the stadium brought. Oh, there you go. Yeah, they, they, Midwestern they, they, fare. They, yeah, then they have the, yeah, they have the big old hot dogs. They, they got the fajitas. It's the. It, it's. It, I, I, I love Cleveland. I had no be, problem with Cleveland. It's kind of fun to check out all the various cities. Well, it's and, 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 and then they got, they, got the, they got this affluent part of town called Independence. Uh-huh. And uh, it's just like 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 the Burbs, just just outside of the town. You can tell it's affluent because you pass by this McDonald's in there, it looks like a governor's mansion. The thing is, <laughs> it's, it's two stories. It's right? brick. There's a chandelier hanging from the... Wow. It's a McDonald's. I guess a maybe McDonald's. the management probably sits in the upper stands up there and looks down at but, what, 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 but one of the great watering holes is that if there's like 10 of them in the area. It's called the Winking Lizard Tavern. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Went there twice. You get the, you get Labatt's for $4.50. Big old thing of beer. Sit back. Monitors everywhere. Great place. There you go. Sounds good to me. Cool. There's your commercial for yeah. Winking Lizard <laughs> I, I went, Tavern. I went to one game at the old Mistake by the Lake when the Browns were playing the Raiders in the playoff game. Right. It was one of the coldest games I've ever been to. It was, no, I Cleveland was, Municipal I, Stadium. Oh, right? yeah, I think it was like about maybe 10 degrees, and there was a wind chill. In fact, the fans, they were just going nuts. They mm. probably had about 80,000 people. Because that was they a did. Stadium. And, and the Raiders won it on a, on a last-second interception by Mike Davis. It was one of the greatest games I've ever seen. Just a, I mean, the field was a, was a frozen it was like a piece of uh, ice. The whole if it field. wasn't the Raiders, it was it was Denver doing it. Yeah. Oh, poor, poor. <laughs> and I should and I should mention they uh, they got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame there. Oh, right? that's right. So yeah. we were doing we were doing our show Saturday from from the Rock and Roll Sweet. Hall of Fame. Sweet. Just Sweet. terrific. Just it's 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 this huge, uh, nice nice uh, uh, modern structured place. A whole section, by the way, for 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 San Francisco. Music. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, was cool. it, yeah it was just, how cool is that? Yeah, just just, hey, just great place, man. Kansas City has the Jazz Hall of Fame, which True. is much smaller, and is right next to the Negro Leagues Hall of Fame, which is right in the middle of downtown. I'd like to see that. Yeah, yeah like, well, not downtown. It's, there's a place called Vine Street. There's sort of a, it's kind of an interesting place. Well, how, uh, how close to Canton, Ohio? That's Cleveland. It's not that far. Was it about an hour, hour, and yeah. hour and a half? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like that, I'd like to go through. Yeah. 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 So, so that's like it's a couple hours from like Columbus. Yeah. yeah. Ohio, Ohio is very underrated state in general. Yeah. I, Man, I, I, I like Cincinnati. I loved it. I like Cleveland. I like the. Can- I've been to Canton. I like Canton. Nice little town. A good buddy of mine does uh, does the weather in it's, Cincinnati. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. Cincinnati. Now, my wife had family in Pittsburgh. Uh, excuse me, just outside of Pittsburgh. So what we did is we fly into Pittsburgh, and then you go through the Panhandle of West Virginia. Boom, uh-huh. you're in Ohio. Nice. Oh, oh, hi. Well, hi. Oh, hi. Well, when you're on the south side of what's the river that's in Cincinnati, if you're on the south side, you're in Kentucky, and they, yeah. they, they talk to themselves, we're Kentuckians down here. Mm-hmm. Kentuckians. Yeah. Kentuckians. We're, we're from the south. Those guys over in Cincy, they're from the north. <laughs> yeah. I was in that tavern on Saturday night. It would have been game four. They had, uh, unfortunately for, for me, they had they had one monitor for the World Series. Are you all kidding the, me? All the rest of them. Ohio State football, oh, baby. Of course. Oh, it was Ohio State, State playing. Uh, 
Uh, Something small like Michigan or something. So you, how, you and how many other people were watching the baseball game, Brent? It was me and maybe, yeah, it, there, was, there, was, there, was a, there was a local, there was a couple that they, they come in there like twice a week that I was sitting next to. But I mean, but, I, but the whole rest of the bar, it was all... So whenever you, whenever, whenever the Giants did something, you clapped and everybody turned around and said, "Shut up, we're trying to no, watch no, no, the game." No, no, no I, you know, I, 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 I pretended like I was in the press box. I didn't clap. Very quiet, clap. very respectful. Yeah. Right, guys. Here we cut to the uh, final commercial break. Here, trivia question again. The theme is uh, NFL running backs from 1972 to 1976. O.J. Simpson won four rushing titles. Which running back prevented Simpson from running from winning five consecutive? In 1977. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he, this guy, it, this was his only rushing title. Really? His only rushing title. All right. And stay with us because we're going to have to AFC, AFC? Uh, I'll give you a hand. AFC. Yeah, AFC and, and running see, back. We just knocked out half of the uh, uh, league. All right. Stay with us because we're going to have some closing comments on Sports Week on 101. God, AFC running back it. winning the rushing title after OJ. 77, the Broncos went to the Super Bowl, but they didn't have a thousand. Uh, they didn't have a winning a guy who won the rushing title. The Raiders didn't. Guy. Steelers, maybe? Would have been Franco? No. Was it was Raiders? I think it was Franco. It was the only title he ever won, so he's probably like a, yeah. a one trick pony, not but, a big But you, you all have heard of him. Heard of him? Okay. He was a good player. Yeah. Pretty good player. Was he playing on a good team? Like one of the better teams? Um, For that year, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What would that be? 7 or whatever it was. Well, in Baltimore. Baltimore was Lydell Mitchell. He was a very tough guy. <laughs> Lydell Mitchell. Yeah, Jess, Jess, I mean, Jess didn't have that. Did Philadelphia have that? Huh? Who was there with that? 49ers. No, it was uh, AFC. Oh, AFC, right, right. AFC. Okay. Chuck Muncy? Chuck Muncy? Is that a guess? He was on the Chuck Muncy Chargers? He was on the, yeah, but he, I don't think he was any good with the Chargers. He didn't really play that well in the NFL. Uh, uh, he played, he played he about seven years, but he wasn't very good. Pretty sad how he died, what, last year? Heart attack, right? A lot of cocaine. I hate to, I hate to say it, Mo Collins, who died last week, I think tore it all. Yeah. What was he, 30? 38. Yeah. And then Oscar Tabaras, man. Yeah, 22. Oh, oh man. The car accident? Oh. Yeah, that's so sad. I thought Mo was a real. Bob Perez says he had, he had to go down the steps of the uh, of uh, the well of the dugout. He said, he, said, like, he wept. That's, that's before he took. Before he took Davis deep. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Pretty sad. Is it? Is it? Yeah. All right. There we, Here go. we go. Yeah, one Perez. Yeah. Sports Econ 101 is finishing up here. Edward Brown, Bruce McGowan, and Vern Glenn in the studio. Okay, here's the um, question about NFL running backs. From 1972 to 1976, O.J. Simpson won four rushing titles. Which running back prevented Simpson from winning five consecutive in that time, by winning his only rushing title, God, the I'm AFC gonna, team. I'm gonna. I'm just, I, I'll, I'll just. I'll just guess Franco Harris, okay, just because I can't think anybody else. Had, he did play for the Broncos, though. Oh. Rob Lytle? Rob no. No. Uh, who was that right there? Top running back in those days. It wasn't Floyd Little. That was after Floyd Little. Who was that? A top running back. You ready? Yeah. And Otis, I noticed. Oh, Otis, Otis Armstrong. Otis Armstrong. Otis Armstrong. Yeah. Otis Armstrong. Yeah. Otis Armstrong. I, I forgot about him. him. Yeah. You can't forget about Otis. Yeah, he played. Otis, my man. Yeah. Craig Morton was the quarterback. The Cal, uh, who's who's in the Bay Area. You know, the, in the Bay Area show. Yes. Craig Morton, nice, nice guy from Cal. Okay, so we're gonna cut to our thoughts for the day here. The first puck ever used in a hockey game was a free frozen piece of cow crap. Get Are out of here! Are you kidding me? I'm glad they Are on you these. kidding me? Come on! Thaw out. What happens when it thaws? <laughs> That's yeah. exactly oh, what I was thinking. Wow! Oh. I don't know what year that was, but I just have to catch that thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all over my face. Okay, yeah, get hit in the mouth. With yeah, that would be cool. Bring out the Zamboni. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ace. Ace. Okay. Uh. okay, so now we all know about Cy Young. So we know about his 511 right. record. Okay, so he also has the record for innings pitched, 7,355. So wow. if you think about it. Now, he had the rubber arm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, if he pitched a nine-inning game every time, right. that would equate to... 817 games. Wow. So if he pitched an average of 35 games a year, which is like ridiculous right. nowadays, yeah. it would take 23 years. Well, he pitched for what, 27 years? It, it was very close to these numbers, but yeah. I mean, that's just 
that, that is and he pitched how many complete games? It's ridiculous. If you look at the number of complete games and shutouts this guy pitched, yeah, he's got all of those records. Fly young. And then right, and they, did they ice down back then? They, they, no they, he, just, he, was a, he was a freak. He was yeah, a freak. We only had probably two, two pitchers. Then. Okay. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective, giving away more free vacations for answering sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. I'm half our team. I'm your host, Edward Brown. We'll see you next week. Good night, America. Go on. That's a wrap. Another one in the